Hello. And this is a short video about a guitar I've built. Um, many of you who have seen my videos know I play a um, traditional Fender Telecaster. I have a lovely 1996 Mexican Telecaster, which at the point I bought it was the most expensive guitar I could afford and the cheapest one that Fender made. Um, but it's absolutely lovely. And when I got back into playing guitar about the um, beginning of this year, one of the first things I had to do, having not played it for the better part of a decade, was take it apart, give it a clean, I replaced the scratch plate, which was quite manky, um, and generally just fettle with it. And that was actually quite a lovely experience. Um, and it made me think, kind of, what else could I do? You know, kind of changing the pickups and what have you. But at the same time, it's a lovely guitar, so I don't want to destroy it. So, um, a lot of watching YouTube later, I decided to set about building my own guitar. And this here, is the result. This is the first electric flapjack uh, custom Telecaster. Um, yeah, I, you know, to give some context here, I haven't done woodwork since I was like 12, which is over a quarter of a decade away. Um, no, a quarter of a century away, even. Um, and so this was kind of a bit of a, <laughs> a leap in the dark for me. So I picked the Telecaster for two reasons. Telecaster uh, style, because it's what I'm familiar with, um, and so you know, I would know when I got something wrong uh, quite quickly. But also because it's also the simplest. You know, this is the first mass-produced electric guitar design. Um, kind of came, originated in 1949. The only thing simpler would be an Esquire, which is essentially a Telecaster without the neck pickup. Um, so you know, keeping things simple for the first build. Um, so yeah, look. And it's worked. So let me talk you through the guitar a bit. The body here is the cheapest body I could find. Um, it is made from base wood. Uh, I bought it as the cheapest body I could find because I thought it wouldn't survive. Uh, I'm, as I say, I haven't done woodwork for a long, long time. Um, and I expected it to be destroyed, but it has actually made it through to the final build. Uh, it's the, it was actually quite fun because it came needing work. So um, I pity the poor person who bought this thinking they were just gonna plug it in, you know, screw some bits on and be done because the control cavity was the wrong shape and the, it was just too small. You couldn't fit the electronics in it. So I had to um, route out the control cavity um, to make things fit. And um, the bridge pickup position was off as well for the scale length for a Telecaster. So I actually had to move the, the cavity for the bridge pickup slightly towards the uh, neck. So that was also good because it was a good learning experience being able to you know, work on a body. I didn't really care if I destroyed it. Um, but you know, it, it's made it through. Um, I did the drill through for the strings as well. You can see it's not perfectly lined up, but um, for a first go, um, it's not too bad. The entire thing was um, stained and finished uh, by me. Uh, my other half picked the colour, which I think has come out really lovely. And it's finished using a finishing oil. Um, the neck I cheated on. Um, the neck is really the hardest bit of a guitar to assemble. So for this one, I bought a pre assembled neck. Um, that was quite expensive, it cost me about 120 quid, uh, as opposed to the body, which cost me 30. Um, but I really wanted to minimise the kind of risks on you know, what is essentially my first woodwork project in a long time. Um, it came unfinished, so I've, I've done all the um, kind of staining on it um, to give it a lovely uh, uh, finish there. And I fitted the machine heads. The machine heads are kind of vintage style. Um, not originally what I wanted, I wanted locking tuners because it was different from what I have on my, tel my other telly. Um, but this neck is Japanese and uh, in Japan they are really big fans of the vintage style look. So the, the holes were milled out for um, the smaller vintage tuners rather than the larger modern tuning pegs. So um, I was forced to go with vintage locks, but actually I'm really pleased. I think they look rather lovely. So I'm pleased with that. Um, that's the kind of physical body. The pickups, uh, this is a Gibson uh, 490. Uh, I re with this build I really want to do something obviously different from what I already had, because there's no point having two guitars that are identical. And I'm a big fan of people like um, Graham Cox and Blur, who play tellies with 
um, humbuckers in the neck position, so I figured I'd go with that. Um, so yeah, so this this is quite nice. Um, the this has um, more traditional tele pickup, so you do get you can get that tele sound out of it um, by going to the bridge position. But in the neck position, you get that kind of more kind of sixties rock sound. Um, you know, kind of kind of getting getting in towards that kind of Led Zeppelin and Cream sound out of there. Uh, so that's quite nice. So I've got a guitar that actually, although physically looks similar to the one I've, one I bought, the one I've made is actually different from that and its own thing, which is nice. Um, a vintage style bridge. Um, this, <laughs> these are kind of known to be kind of a pain because you can never get the intonation quite right because they've only got three variables where you've got six strings. But you know, again, I wanted to do something different from my. Uh, existing Telecaster, and I really like these. At some point, I might get an ashtray to clip on there. Um, other than that, it's fairly standard. Um, the control electronics are based on the Telecaster HS, um, and the nut, the nut I filed myself, that was fun. So I just got a, a blank um, and did the grooves for the strings and filed it down to size and made it the right radius and what have you, so that was quite nice. It's a very slow process. Um, but somewhat satisfying. Yeah, and um, that's it. I'll do a little video of how it sounds shortly. But this is, I just wanted to run through the actual physical guitar. Um, you know, I haven't <laughs> done anything like this before. YouTube is actually full of fantastic tutorial videos and as are kind of forums on various loofery sites. So the kind of main learning from this is, yes, you know, you do need to be careful, but a rank amateur can take, you know, a bunch of parts and assemble a, what has turned out to be a rather lovely guitar. So this is the first one. Next one, I plan on doing the body on the CNC router, which is over there. Uh, I'm in make space, actually, I should. This is where I did all the woodwork, and this is not my home workshop. Um, and it's actually been nice to building it in make space because my soldering was rusty and I've had people teach me how to do soldering, I've had people teach me about drills, um, just kind of, it's nice to have a community of fellow makers um, to kind of help put me on the right tracks. Uh, I certainly couldn't have done this without, without their assistance as well. Um, so you should check that out. Um, yeah, this is, this is it. So yeah, I'll do a, a, a video of it being played shortly, but for now, there you go.